Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about pioglitazone. What is the mechanism, side effects, precautions and clinical use of pioglitazone? What is this drug? By the suffix glitazone, we can easily identify this drug as thiazolidine diol. Within this chemical category, we have few of the other drugs like rosiglitazone and troglitazone. But among this category, many of the drugs are withdrawn. But still, pioglitazone is available and it is useful in the treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus. And particularly, this drug is not increasing the insulin secretion and it requires sufficient insulin levels within the body. So, this drug may be prescribed with the other drugs which are increasing the insulin secretion. But the main role of this pioglitazone is to increase the insulin sensitivity because in the type 2 diabetes mellitus, one of the important factors is the development of insulin resistance. Insulin action is somewhat reduced and its sensitivity to control the glucose levels within the body is also reduced. In such situations, pioglitazone can increase the insulin sensitivity. So today in this video, we are going to see how this drug increases the insulin sensitivity and what are the important side effects of this drug. First of all, it is the chemical nature of pioglitazone. We have already seen that this drug is a thiazolidine dione derivative. So this is the structure of pioglitazone. And here we can observe one of the heterocyclic ring system with sulfur and nitrogen. So this is nothing but the thiazolidine dione. Let us give the numbering. We have to start the numbering from the sulfur. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now this is a thiazolidine with ketone groups at second and fourth position. So 2, 4 dione. Now we can write the suffix of the name as 2, 4 thiazolidine dione. This 2,4-thiazolidine dione is attached by a methyl group at the 5th position. So, we can write this as 5-methyl. This methyl group is further attached with a phenyl ring. So, we can write this as phenyl. And this phenyl group is having a side chain at the 4th position. So, what is that side chain? If we consider simple alkyl side chain, it is a simple ethoxy group. So, 4th position it is having the ethoxy group. We can represent like 4-ethoxy. And this ethoxy group is attached with the pyridine ring system. So let us give the numbering to this pyridine ring system. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now this pyridine is attached by second position and it is having a ethyl group at the fifth position. Now we can write this as 2 dash 5 ethyl 2 pyridinyl. That is the name of pioglitazone. So pioglitazone is a thiazolidine dione derivative with a large side chain at the fifth position. Now let us see how this drug acts. Pioglitazone is going to stimulate one of the nuclear receptors PPAR gamma. Peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma. These are the nuclear receptors on which this pioglitazone can act such that it can produce a gene transcription and protein synthesis. These PPAR gamma receptors are present on the variety of cells they mainly present on the adipose tissue along with the muscle and liver. Now on these target tissues, pioglitazone can stimulate these nuclear receptors which increase the gene transcription and protein synthesis. One of the important target of the pioglitazone is the adipocytes. Now pioglitazone can enter into the adipocytes. One of the target of pioglitazone is on the nucleus which is expressed with the PPR gamma receptors. These are the nuclear receptors on which pioglitazone can act. Now pioglitazone can enter into the adipocytes and it can bind to the PPR gamma receptors. When these receptors are activated, they are undergoing the dimerization, but they are the heteronuclear receptors. They will undergo dimerization with the retinoid receptors, which are indicated as RXR. After the dimerization with the retinoid receptors, this dimer can act on the DNA, but before directly interacting with the DNA, if you have the coactivation factors are going to bind to this dimerized nuclear receptors. Now this entire complex can interact with the DNA within the adipocytes such that they will promote the gene transcription and this gene transcription lead to the protein synthesis. In this way, pioglitazone can increase the protein synthesis and it can release many number of proteins which are responsible for the increase in the insulin sensitivity. 
Now, pyoglitazone can act on the PPR gamma receptors, thereby it can increase the gene transcription and protein synthesis. And among the number of proteins that are going to be synthesized, pyoglitazone can increase the protein synthesis of one of the protein, FATP, fatty acid transporter protein. This protein is responsible for the increased transport of the fatty acid into the adipocytes. Similarly, it can also synthesize the GLUT4 receptors which are responsible for the uptake of the glucose and it can also increase the one of the enzyme lipoprotein lipase which is responsible for the cleavage of the triglycerides into the free fatty acids. Apart from these three types of proteins, pyoglitazone can also increase the other protein synthesis and even the exact mechanism is not known. But now let us see what is the role of these three proteins and how they are going to increase the insulin sensitivity. So at the adipose tissue, one of the important protein is the FATP, fatty acid transporter protein and another transporter is the GLUT4 receptors. Pyoglitazone increase the expression of these two types of proteins. Now free fatty acids which are present in the plasma, they can enter into the adipocytes through this FATP. Similarly, glucose which is present in a free form, it can be uptaken into the adipocytes through the GLUT4 receptors. And this glucose can be converted into glycerol. And these free fatty acids and glucose, they can form the triglycerides. In this way, within the adipocytes, lipogenesis is increased by pyoglitazone. Similarly, another protein that is going to be more expressed is the lipoprotein lipase enzyme. This enzyme is responsible for the cleavage of the triglycerides which are present in the plasma. Now, these triglycerides can be cleaved such that they can release the free fatty acids. And these free fatty acids are then uptaken into the adipocytes such that the lipogenesis is increased. In this way, pyoglitazone can increase the lipogenesis and it can reduce the free fatty acids levels within the plasma as well as glucose levels within the plasma. And this action increase the sensitivity of insulin such that the glucose levels can be adequately controlled. What are the precautions? One of the important precautions is a congestive heart failure. Pyoglitazone can increase the fluid retention. It can produce some edema. And this fluid retention and edema is because of action of pyoglitazone on the renal tubules. So within the renal tubules, at the correcting tubules, the sodium can be reabsorbed into the systemic circulation through the specialized sodium channels. These are called as renal tubular sodium channels. And at the basolateral membrane, another pump is present. This is nothing but sodium potassium ATPase pump. Now the sodium which is present in the filtrate can be reabsorbed into the tubular membrane through the renal tubular sodium channels. Then it can be reabsorbed into the systemic circulation through the sodium potassium ATPase pump where it is going to exchange one potassium molecule. In this way, sodium is going to be reabsorbed at the collecting tubules. Now, pyoglitazone can stimulate this renal tubular sodium channels such that sodium is more reabsorbed into the systemic circulation. In this way, pyoglitazone can increase the sodium reabsorption, thereby it can increase the fluid retention, which may lead to the edema in the patients. This edema is more troublesome in the patients who are having the congestive heart failure. That's why this drug should be carefully given in the patients who are having the risk of congestive heart failure. And then the important precaution is the bladder cancer. Pyoglitazone can increase the risk of bladder cancer as well as this drug can also increase the ovulation which is important in the premenopausal anovulatory women. So when this pyoglitazone is given to premenopausal anovulatory women, it can increase the ovulation which increases the risk of pregnancy in the women. That's why this drug should be carefully given in the anovulatory women. And this drug is contraindicated in the pregnant women as well as in the breastfeeding women because of increased stimulation of ovulation in the women. Similarly, pyoglitazone, when it is used for chronic use, it can produce few of the bone fractures. And this drug can also increase the hepatic failure, which may be either fatal or non-fatal. When this drug is used for longer period, we can observe few of the symptoms like abdominal discomfort, dark urine, anorexia, and fatigue in the patients. So hepatic failure should be carefully monitored when this pyoglitazone is used for longer periods. What are the side effects? Important side effects include headache, 
and it can produce a respiratory tract infections like sinusitis, myalgias, muscle pains, abdominal pain, edema. It can also produce some flatulence. And because of action on the liver, it can produce some dark urine, fatigue. And another important side effect is the weight gain. So fluid retention and weight gain are the two important side effects that should be carefully monitored when the pyoglitazone is used in the cardiovascular patients. Similarly, it can increase the bone fractures, hypoglycemia and dizziness in the patients. How it is given? Pyoglitazone is available as a tablet at the different strengths like 15 mg, 30 mg and 45 mg. Initial dose is started at 15 mg. But the maximum dose can be achieved up to 45 mg based on the HbA1c values. So this drug is not increasing the insulin secretion but it can increase the insulin sensitivity. So when this drug is combined along with the insulin otherwise the drugs which are going to increase the insulin secretion it can increase the insulin sensitivity and therefore it can control the glucose levels in the diabetic patients. So that's about this pyoglitazone. Pyoglitazone is a thiazolidinedione. This drug acts on the peroxisome proliferator activator receptor gamma, PPR gamma, which is a one type of nuclear receptor. By acting on these nuclear receptors, pyoglitazone can increase the gene transcription and protein synthesis and it can stimulate the translation of so many types of proteins. Among these fatty acid transporter protein, GLUT4 protein and lipoprotein lipase are more important, which can increase the glucose uptake into the adipocytes and increase lipogenesis and decrease triglycerides and VLDL levels within the plasma. Because of many of the actions, pyoglitazone can increase the insulin sensitivity, thereby it can reduce the glucose levels within the plasma. But this drug is having the fluid retention and edema are the two important precautions. So this drug should be carefully given in the patients who are having the congestive heart failure. Even this drug can produce other abnormalities like the bone fractures, hepatic failure and increased risk of pregnancy because of ovulation. All this should be carefully monitored when this drug is prescribed in the susceptible patients. And this drug is initiated at a dose of 15 mg but the maximum dose can be achieved up to 45 mg based on the glucose levels which is monitored by HbA1c values, glycosylated hemoglobin values. So that's for today. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.